Uh, okay, so good uh, good morning, good afternoon to you in, in Spain. So I'm going to take you for a session called Game of Phones, uh, and please use the uh, chat box as much as possible as we go along. So if our students have got all these photos on their phones, why don't we tap into them? So one of my favourite pieces of homework that I gave to my students was simply take a photo, you know, so that the next lesson they're coming in with a photo of something they did, and that first five, ten minute warmer is them talking about what they did. But here I've got some adaptations. Take a picture of something white. Well, that could be, you could change that to any topic. You know, if the topic of the week is clothes in the book, take a picture of some clothes. Take a picture of, of the food you ate the, in the week. So as a course book writer, one of the things that I always, that you always used to get on my nerves was, you know, like when you're teaching fixed language, you know what I mean? Like phrasal verbs, idioms, binomials, those kind of things. The practice activities are very limited. But with a mobile phone, what I can actually get my students to do is contextualize language. So, for example, if my students, have, if the course book page was on idioms, I get my students to work in group and take photos that contextualize idioms. So here are five idioms represented by pictures. Imagine the engagement that the students are now getting through their mobile phone. Yeah, so, so we do the lesson on idioms, put my students into groups, they either choose the idioms from the coursework page or choose the idioms themselves uh, for it. They work in groups, they take a photo to contextualize them, and then we kind of have a little photo gallery. If you can't share the, the photos in school, then they then they, they all stand with their photos and students go around and guess the idioms. So this is an app called Earplay. Okay, and it's free to download. A young woman you've never seen in your life sits down at your table. She looks anxious. Pretend you know me. Do you ask questions or play along? Play along. So glad you could make it, you say. I'm starving. Let's order. I think it's changing the way I'm doing listening. Because here the students are listening to make a decision. I don't know if you got it. So the story unfolds and of course stops. And it is waiting for you to make a decision. What I've hopefully tried to uh, show you today is how we can tap into mobile learning. I'm not suggesting that you go out and do everything at once. But hopefully, you know, the, just the use of photos is one way to get into there. You know, there is so much to explore with it. Thank you for being a lovely little audience taking part with me. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Otherwise, I'll shut up now. <laughs> and thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you very much for attending the webinar. Good evening, everyone. And thanks for investing this evening to enjoy webinars and have this webinar day. I hope uh, they are useful. Something I love uh, of digital tests. They save you marking time. They save money because you waste, uh, you waste uh, money in photocopies and they save paper. Some companies or some schools follow a paperless policy. It's an environmentally friendly um, um, suggestion, the one I'm making now. And very important, they can be used alongside any textbooks. So, uh, Socrative allows you to choose an icon, a rocket, and the students are randomly distributed and they have a competition to see which group is that uh, the fast finishers, okay? You will check the, question, the, the questions and the answers later. And it's, it's free. You can play Kahoot in team mode. This is the way we always use Kahoot. One a student, one device. But why don't we change this way to make collaboration, collaborative skills playing teams versus team with shared devices? My last conclusion, try to make the assessment process a positive and enjoyable experience. Technology can help you in this challenge. Thank you for attending. Thank you for your, your participation and your questions and your doubts. It was a pleasure sharing this webinar with you again. Well, lovely to be here. So as Monse said, I'm going to be talking about apps for the classroom. My top three, and they've been my top three since practically forever, are Kahoot, like many of you, Class Dojo, and Padlet. So I'm going to talk first of all about Kahoot, okay? Um, now, as you all know, I'm sure Kahoot is excellent for quizzes. You can search for a quiz if you don't want to write it yourself. You can then edit it. You can set challenges. But what I'm going to talk about um, more than that is, is the blind Kahoots. So does anybody know what a blind Kahoot is? 
Okay, so nobody knows. Oh, that's fantastic news. Okay, we normally use Kahoot for, for assessing things or for revising things that the students already know. A blind Kahoot can be used to teach something new, okay? So instead of going into the classroom and explaining uh, a new concept or, an, or a piece of language or grammar to your learners, then you would give them the blind kahoot to start with. So the next one I was going to talk about, of course, was Class Dojo. Now this is probably my absolute top number one favorite this year um, for lots and lots of different reasons. Um, it's an app that gamifies the classroom. You can set up your class groups, but you can also form groups within it. So if you want the, cl the class to work in groups, you can set up uh, random groups. Yes, Amparo, it's, lots of schools are using it now school-wide um, you can check attendance on it you can give your learners points um, they choose avatars you can use the timer and music and it's great for contact with the parents and finally I'm going to talk about Padlet Padlet is basically just like a notice board somewhere where you can pin pieces of information um, in a physical area like in the classroom you might have a notice board where you're where you're sticking notices for the students or for parents um, but it's a virtual notice board okay well thank you all very very much for participating and please feel free to go back to that padlet or to the challenge and participate after we've finished if you like as well thank you very much Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Hello from Alicante. Today we are going to focus on using technology in pre-primary. What type of resources can we use then? When working with, um, with children in pre-primary, we know that we have to focus on routines. We have to base our teaching on routines to get it started because routines help to build up children's confidence. They know what to expect. So then they feel ready to learn new things. Uh, but what happens, for example, with class and management, we can also make use of the, of the interactive whiteboard just to keep control of the noise level. The aim is that they have to try to keep the board uh, happy. The idea is like the students listen to the board and not to the teacher. You don't have to, you know, keep interrupting the class. What else can we do with interactive whiteboards? We have, for example, phonics. Uh, for example, just a very simple activity that could be kind of uh, matching. They click on the sound, they listen to the sound, and then they have to recognize, for example, the picture that contains or starts with that sound. Okay, what else can we do? I've been doing this, probably you're familiar with QR codes. So very simple to create. Uh, very simple just to, you know, to do in class. This is good activity for the students. For example, I display these uh, QR readers, uh, these codes around the classroom and then they move around the classroom and they see what picture they can find and they say the word, for example, or it can be depending on the type of students that you have, you can give them a worksheet with pictures and then they move around the classroom just reading or scanning that QR uh, code and to try to find the word that matches the pictures. Anything you need, I will be, you know, very glad to help you and if you need any other ideas or, or whatever. Okay, thank you so much. So, thanks again to Mariella, thanks to Sean, thanks to Mandy, thanks to Abel, thanks to all of you for participating and making Webinar Day a great success. I think we've had loads of participants, loads of great talks. It's been really engaging and really enjoyable. So thank you, and we'll be back in the new academic year with lots more webinars.